Hello everyone. This week we have a few different assignments and so I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page whether you're using Max or Maya. Um, we have working on your practice object, really exploring the modifier tab in 3ds Max and you know editable poly modeling no matter which software you're in. And then we have our other component which is to create your final piece that we're going to use throughout the term. Now this is a short amount of time and you do want to give the best that you can but know that there will be some time to edit as we go along. Okay, so have fun with the practice object, see what you can really create, you know, push the boundaries of what the tools can do, and then really hone in the skill to use on your milestone assignment. Alright, so in 3ds Max, over here you have your modifier tab, and whenever you create an object, you're going to have to right mouse click on it to convert it to an editable poly. In Maya, it's already an editable poly. So if we right mouse click and hold on your object, you'll see we have these options here. So object mode selects the object as a whole, edge, verte vertex, and face mode. Now whichever one of these you're in, it will highlight. So I'm in vertex mode and you can see the points where all the edges meet are my vertices. I can click and drag to select multiples. I can click and let go. Hold shift to click multiples this way, and again, the same works in Max. Uh, I can click, let go, hold shift, and double click, and that will get me a whole edge loop. That's why when we're modeling, we want to make sure edge loops are clean and go all the way around our object. So then I can use W, E, and R just like we have in the past, but I'm not editing my entire piece. I'm only editing whatever vertices, edges, or faces I have selected. Again, you want to see it in 3D to move around. So using these sub-level you know, selections, we can really create different things for our object. And again, the same is going to be in Max. Over here, you'll have your face mode, um, object mode, etc. in your modifier stack. Now, the main thing um, here, we're going to use more menus, whereas in 3ds Max, it's all in that modifier stack. But let's say, um, I'm just going to make a new shape. I'm going to create a cube. I can look over in my Polycube 1 tab to change the amount of subdivisions. I'm going to keep it a little bit more simple for this. We'll do 4, 4, and 4. All right, so let's say, for instance, that I wanted to make a castle, you know, the little like archery pieces at the top. Well, I can go into face mode and select the faces that I need, but if I'm going to raise these up, can see it pulls all the edges around it. So this is when we get uh, to use some of our polygon editing tools. And again, they're in Max or Maya. For Maya, you're going to see in Mesh, Edit Mesh, and Mesh Tools. So Mesh Tools here actually has a modeling toolkit. So when you click on that, it's going to be over here with your attribute editor and channel box. But these are a lot of our options, and actually Maya took this uh, from 3ds Max. It looks pretty similar, not dead on, but pretty similar to the modifier tab you're going to see in Max. But we can do an extrude, and so what our extrude does is it allows us to move those faces up without affecting the ones around it. Now, you can always use this to adjust. I'm just clicking and dragging over it. Keep faces together. If you are selecting multiple, let me just show you real quick. If I'm selecting two faces next to each other and I go to do an extrude, keep faces together is turned on. So that means if I actually go to move one of these later, it's connected. Whereas if I don't keep faces on and I extrude, and then if I go to grab one and move it, I'll do the same one so you can see, 
they're actually two separate faces. This is something to be aware about because if you're not going to move them apart, you have a lot of extra detail that you don't need that's stuck between the two faces. So you definitely do not want that turned on unless you know that you're going to separate them. Okay, so extrude is a really common one that we use. I would say that's probably our base where we start. Um, we can do I just hit delete to remove faces. Let's say you have something like this and you want to complete the hole. I can go into edge mode and uh, you have to hit equal amounts of edges. So this is where it's important to have this poly count open. I can see I have four. And again, this is in um, display, heads up display, poly count. But I've got four edges selected and then I can hit bridge. And that fills in the gap. Now the only issue here is you can see I've ruined an edge flow here. I've cut up these edges. So you want to make sure that you include a division in there. Once you've done that, I always double check and go into vertex mode and do a click and drag around my vertice. Now it says I have three selected. That's because I probably grabbed, oh no, all in here. So zoom in. Let's see if we can find it. Sorry, it's a little confusing as to what I'm looking at. I think I lost what side I was on. Here we are. So I'm going to click and drag around these, and you can see I have three vertices. So that is the issue, because I have the one vertice from each face that I just made and the one that was already there. So what you want to do is click and drag around them. I go to Edit Mesh, Merge to Center. And that combines my vertices so I only have one. This is a vital step. When you are extruding and inserting edge loops and doing all these things, again, no matter what software you're in, you need to make sure that you only have one vertice at each point. So over here, to just show you, I've got the one vertice. We've got another one here. That's going to break... You know, when, when you're actually modeling, when you're texturing, if you were to bring it into sculpt, if you wanted to animate it, it's going to cause issues to have multiple vertices at one point. So again, just click and drag around it. This one I only had two. Merge to center. All solved. You can see I've got one, one, two, but always make sure you haven't selected something else. So going from the bottom, clicking and dragging, I've got two. I have to edit mesh, merge to center. If you're doing the same tool over and over again, you can hit G, uh, as in great. G redoes your last action. But as you're doing this, you might just want to make sure to go to Merge to Center to know that you know exactly what's going on. Okay? Um, we've got Multicut, which allows you to actually draw to make an edge here. You may want to use... Um, and this is your components you can change but you can go up here and we'll go to mesh tools insert edge loop and again most of these are in the toolkit just trying to show you some different ways uh, this works perpendicularly so whichever edge I click on it's gonna make a edge loop that's perpendicular this tool can be a little finicky it may not go all the way around depending upon what you've already modeled and if it thinks it's clean and it's easy to see where the edge loop has been. So sometimes we need to use multi-cut and draw our own. So for example, I can click, click and let go, click and let go. I'm not making too straight of a line, I'll fix that in a second. You hit enter when it's set, but you need to make sure I've stopped my edge loop here. I need to keep that going. We don't want to just put in edges in random spots. You want to make sure that they are going fully around your object. It's called topology or edge flow. And you might have to change the angle a little bit. But then we're going to meet back where we started and hit enter. Now we have an edge loop, but just as before, I might need to go into vertex mode. I see I've got two here and then we can edit mesh, merge to center. If you want to straighten out the line, you can grab you know, whichever vertices you want. And then actually if you hit scale, that is going to straighten it out. And then you can move it to wherever you need it to be. Okay, 
So again, holding shift to grab multiples. I'm going to grab scale, straighten it out, and move it over. So between the multi-cut and insert edge tool, uh, extrude and bridge, those are going to be the main tools. Now there are a lot here and in Max, so make sure you're actually looking through these. And if you do have any questions, feel free to email me. So I'm going to go in object mode. Now the problem here, not problem, but we have an assignment to add texture to your final milestone as well. Now we're next week going to talk about UVs and UV unwrapping and actually bringing in your UVs, which is your layout for texture for your object, into Photoshop and creating really awesome texture. So this week, I just want you to get used to applying textures and using what Max and Maya have to offer. So one thing to know, you can be in face mode and just apply a texture to certain faces. You can apply it in object mode to the whole object. Um, let's get a different shape. Do a cylinder. All right, so if I right mouse click and hold, I can do assign new material. Now, these are all different types of shaders, and you'll have you know the same kind of different ones in Max and Maya. Things might be called a little bit differently, but you'll still have both have like Blin and Lambert. Blin and Lambert are the default kind of base textures. Blin is shiny, and Lambert is matte. So depending upon what you're creating, if you want it to have a sheen or a shine, you want to do Blin, if not Lambert. So let's just say I'll do a Blin. Blin 2 is over here, and I can change the color that way. Transparency, do I want it to be see-through? Ambient color is kind of color of the light. You can leave that one alone. Um, bump mapping, we can create a nice uh, cool kind of fake bump or texture to it. So any of these, and as we go along, there's more for the uh, specular or what makes the highlight of the lamb or of the blend. You won't have those with the Lambert. But all of these have this little box next to it. And in Max, you guys have a little box next to it as well. If I click on this, I can import a file. And in Max, it's going to say bitmap but I can grab any file. So if you took some photos of textures, if you found some free to use textures, this is a great way to bring those in. I could also bring in some of the standards. So for instance, I've got Checker. Um, and if you, in Maya, if you don't see it, hit six on the keyboard. So we can see that this Checker doesn't match. That's because I haven't unwrapped my object yet. And again, we'll get in depth with that next class, but that's gonna be up here, UVs, and then we've got automatic, cylindrical, etc. So since I have a cylinder, I can do that, um, but we're gonna leave this for right now. Okay, so let's say, let me go back into object mode. I've got this, and actually, I'm gonna do this for a second. Go back to my purple. All right, so I can put in a file or in any of these. And remember, bump is giving it a fake kind of a texture. So I'm going to try fractal just for you to see. So this is just putting it in my bump channel. I haven't done anything. This is still just a plain purple texture. But because I added that in my bump, you can see what I have. So this is really cool. You know, if you have a brick wall, you can use the same image. So if I place a brick texture on something, I can also place that brick texture in the bump and it'll give it some nice ridges based upon the picture. For the bump channel, it uses a black to white grayscale to kind of figure out what should come away or towards the viewer and what should go away. Okay, so again, you can go into face mode and let's say I wanted this whole middle section, so actually I'll just click and drag to get to the middle. I can do assign new material, and you know, maybe I want this to be matte, and I could do, you know, whatever you would like to do. So just make sure, play around with some things, let me know if you have any questions on anything. I'll do some noise here too. Okay, so again, you're working on your practice object 
and your milestone. I know some of you didn't turn in. Uh, it was an optional discussion. So if you have any questions on what you should do for your object or if you're struggling to model your object, again, reach out and let me know. Other than that, I look forward to seeing your projects.